I want us to think back to the story, Hikaro's toy troubles, and I want you to talk, um, think about what was the problem again that Hikaru was facing. Um, Christian. Hikaru's parents had a toy company rival and they were stealing all their customers. Okay, excellent. So what solution did they end up coming up with to try to solve that problem? Uh, Evans. A Mac lift train to carry the, um, their toys to the shopping bag. Okay, and how would a maglev train, how would that help solve the problem of not having enough customers? Because it would attract customers because they might want to see, see what, how it works. Okay, excellent. So they found a, a way to attract more customers. They knew they needed to attract more customers, and they came up with a way. It was not too expensive and not too hard. They designed a maglev package transportation system, right? Okay, so we're now in the ask phase, okay? I told you what your challenge is. You're going to design a maglev train that can carry weights and will move across a track when gently pushed. Okay. Now, before you start that design challenges, there's probably some questions you have. So let's brainstorm some of the questions that you have. Stefan. Since it's repelled, how come it doesn't fall like to the other side? Okay. How do we keep it from going off the track? How do we keep the train from going off the track? What else? What color is it going to be? How heavy will the weight that's on it be? Okay, how heavy? Um, Tyreek. How many magnets we're going to need? All right, so let's look at some of these questions. Let's start with how do we keep the train from falling off the track? Deshaun. Put a wall. Okay, put a wall. So in that case, I have a sample of what we're going to use. You asked me about the materials too. Okay, so you are going to get, um, this is kind of heavier than paper, okay, and we're going to put it inside, this is going to be your track, and you put your track inside the box, okay, and then you're going to design not only the track, but you're going to design the vehicle that goes along the track, okay, so that also answers the, um, how big, right? How heavy will the weights be? Okay. Now, the weights, you're going to have a cup that goes on top of your vehicle. And these are going to be the weights, these little glass beads. They all have the same weight. What do you think the goal is with the weights? Um, yes. To try to get the, um, the, the vehicle um, to the end with the most weights? Exactly, okay? So we want to have the most weights possible, but we still want it to be able to levitate or float over the track and move to the other end when it's pushed. Okay, so the materials. You're going to get um, a bar magnet with the poles marked, north and south. Okay, you'll get a small paper cu cup to hold the weights. Uh, masking tape. You're going to get sheets of Manila, just manila cardstock. So you're going to get a box that's about one foot long and about three to four inches wide. And you're going to get magnets of different shapes and sizes. Okay, so we've talked about what questions uh, we have, what are our constraints, what materials we're working with, okay? So yesterday you were working in centers and you were exploring properties of magnets. You tested to see which kind of magnet was the strongest. You explored to see if the magnet um, could go through different materials, okay? Here's what I would like you to do. So I'm going to hand out a packet to you. Remember, we're still in the ask phase, so I want you to stay on the front sheet. And in the packet, it's asking you to list two properties of magnets that we can use that will help us to design our maglev trans package transportation system. Okay, let me share with you what Corel put. Corel says, property one, the repelling of the poles. She said, this property is important because if you don't put the same poles together, the train would not levitate. Okay, so that's a property of magnets that's going to help her in designing her um, maglev system. 
All right, so we just finished the ask stage, right? Now, we're in the imagine stage here, of the imagine stage of the engineering design process. And at this point, we need to start brainstorming ideas. So I'm going to be giving you sample materials at your table. And then after you've had a chance to explore these materials, you're going to then come up with two different maglev system designs, OK? We should use that as the tracks. But if I put my hands on the side like this, yeah, so, so, it, so it doesn't go to the side. If you haven't already started, I want you to go ahead and I want you to come up with two ideas and make sure in your diagram you include your vehicle and your track. I see that people are labeling their poles on their diagrams and that's going to be very helpful when you actually go to design it. Make sure you label it, okay, Eli? This is no idea, you know what? There's a dot on it, and when you turn it around, it's a dot. At this point, I know you've been exploring. Hopefully you got to uh, diagram some ideas. Now, you cannot start building. You cannot move to the create phase of the engineering design process until you finish the plan phase, OK? So when I see that you have a complete design that you've come together, you've decided what you're going to do, you've planned it out here, and you've listed your materials, then you're going to come up as a group to the, to the supply table. So at this time, I want you to take your, um, your, your designing packet, your, your designing packet, and I want you to go somewhere, sit somewhere with your um, partner and start planning. <laughs> Okay, ten ring, ten disc, what else? Okay, next, write it, no, write what happened, he said three beats. Wait, what are those magnets? What are those magnets? Oh, those are the ring magnets and the um, disc magnets. Okay. I know you're having a good time. We're going to continue this tomorrow. We're finishing in the create step. And if you notice in the create step, it says follow your plan and create it. And then it says test it out. So some of you have started testing. Some of you have not. I'm going to give you uh, about 30 minutes to finish creating and testing your design. So go ahead and get started. Let's look. So I see there's a strip magnet in the center, right? What pole, sh what pole do you want um, facing up? North. North. Okay, test and see. Test right here. Your strip magnet. The curvy one is causing the problem. These are attractive. Where's the tape? It's repetitive, but it's moving to the side. Like, add more tracks, or you can make this more bigger so it doesn't like have to move to the side. So it stops. Well, so we decided since we were we were putting two, we saw that we had two of the um, the magnet strips in the middle. We thought that it was not gonna work, so we put all the magnet. We're trying to put all, fit all the magnets in there, so when well, so when it levitates, it doesn't go to any other side. That oh, it's levitating! Yeah. It is. Yeah. Oh gosh! It it's is. It's levitating. You see it? Oh, he says, "Did your magnet go levitate above yeah. the track?" Yes. You've been testing it all along. I see a lot of hands going back to our designs, which tells me that we must be done discussing um, page four, six, where we're talking about how it works, okay? So on the last page of your packet, some of you have already been listening, listing how you're going to improve your design, okay? Most of you have already talked about it. Um, at some point, just jot a little note down about what you're improving and why, 
And then go ahead, you have now about 30 minutes to work, um, to start trying to improve your designs, okay? So I want you to go ahead and work on improving your design. Okay, he makes these bigger. No. Yeah. <laughs> we need to fix our train track. Yeah, definitely. Definitely needs to be bigger. Try not to make any spaces on the side. We do need more of the strip bags. We have a bunch right here. That would love to see this. Awesome. That's without tape, maybe he was rubbing against it. So we left it without the tape. You see it's moving? That's so cool. It's it's now moving across the track. I know, right? Wait, let's let's get the pebbles. Let's get the pebbles. Let's get the pebbles. It works. It actually works, I guess. Wait, I want to see what's inside. Maybe we should put more than one wall. Let's try that. Let's see. Let me have you all come over to the front table. Do you think you would have been as successful? if we hadn't shared as a group? No. Can you explain to yes. me why? Albert. Because if we didn't share them, if we didn't get any suggestions, then we would like keep making like ideas that kind of like wouldn't work. Right. Mistakes. Okay. And, not, and I wouldn't even call them mistakes because you don't know if something's going to work till you try it, right? I'm still working on mine. And you'll still probably want, to, at some point, want to come back and work on yours. So you you build on each other's ideas. Do you think you would have been as successful if you were working by yourself? No. Engineers never, Stefan, they never work by themselves. They're always sharing with each other. And it's not copying. It's it's learning from what other people have done and improving on their designs. Excellent work, and we're gonna keep, we'll keep talking about engineers throughout the year and coming back to this. So right when I start to introduce lesson four to the students, um, I explain to them that they're gonna be designing their maglev systems and they're gonna come up with uh, a diagram and plan it all out. And I had a student raise his hand, and um, Alex raises his hand and he says, can I use the data that we collected yesterday in our center, center rotations. And I, my response was yes, you, not only can you, but you should be using that data, well, which, was, uh, I, which I was really glad that he brought up because um, a lot of the times the students will forget what they get so excited when they go into designing that they forget what they've learned. But I had specific students that would say, I'm going to use the disk magnet on, in my um, system because it's the strongest.